Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at DC Who's Who. This is issue 24, and I forgot how much longer this series ran over the DC, uh, over the Marvel Universe comic series uh, that did the same thing. This is just chugging along, and it looks like no end in sight. All right, we're 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 up to the T's. Jeez, and uh, what what great characters? There's Ultra Boy right on the cover, front and center. But it's my buddy Mike. Hey, Mike, if you ever watch this, Mike, when we were little kids. You would pretend to be Ultra Boy when we were swimming in the pool and, you know, you push off the side of the pool. You pretend you're flying. He pretend everybody else in the world, all normal people are playing Superman. Mike's playing Ultra Boy. There's Trigon, the Ultra Humanite. I'm not going to name all the characters because the names are right there. But, well, oh, Tsunami. I'm Tweedledee, Tweedledum. Okay. Just, uh, Thea. Did I do this one already? No, I didn't. Why is Thea on this? I thought Thea was in the last one. I think that's just an editorial accident. All right, so let's, as always, I always like to look at the the names of the of the writer, uh, the people who wrote letters, just to see. Here we got the. I always see cast of characters, but what I mean to say is the cast of creators. And here we got uh, the uh, indicia. The indicia, for those of you who don't know, is where you put all the legalities. This is like the copyright and legal stuff. So if you ever want to sue this particular comic issue, this is the legal stuff. Tim Trench. Right, who drew this? Sandy Plunkett and oh, Craig I lo, I know Craig Craig Russell K, K, P Craig Russell. I can't say it, but I know it. I don't know anything about. Oh, we have Wonder Woman. Okay, so it's a secondary character in Wonder Woman. As usual, if you've been following the series, I don't know much about Wonder Woman before the crisis. You know, not not any more than most the uh, most people. Titano, who drew this? John Byrne. Holy mackerel! Well, my eyes are going, but but I should have guessed that. Now I'm going to go, oh, yeah, but you, nobody's going to believe me. But uh, a giant monkey who, who fought a, you know, a giant ape that fought Superman. And uh, I hated Titano as a kid. Now as an adult, I, I like giant monkeys and things like that. But as a kid, I don't know what it was. It, I think it was Julius Schwartz or Garner Fox. One of them said that uh, uh, having, having monkeys and apes on comics was, was like printed money. And uh, for me... It, I only like I remember the Fantastic Four had a big golden grill around the cover, and I bought it begrudgingly just because I collected comics. You know, I collected the Fantastic Four, but uh, I did not like giant apes and apes and gorilla stuff, with the exception of Planet of the Apes. I love Planet of the Apes. So this is Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, which, a mouthful of a name, drawing the Titans of Myth. That's why Thea's on this again, and uh, they were famously explored in the. Uh, in the new Teen Titans comics, you know, the go figure Teen Titans comics had the Titans of myth, but I love this story. I read it and read it and reread it over and over again. And, uh, I, as, as you may or may not know, I'm a Greek mythology freak. I love Greek mythology. It's up there with comic books is one of my obsessions. Greek mythology, Norse mythology, Roman mythology. Um, I'm, I'm getting into Japanese mythology and um, uh, I, I've always been interested in the Egyptian mythology, but I, I have to admit that uh, that is my least, my area, I, I know the least about Egyptian mythology because it, it just changes so much, you know, over the, you know, Egypt is vastly old. Why am I talking about Egypt? TNT and Dan the Dynamite by uh, Romeo Tangal. The only, they were like a Batman and Robin team, you know, but they had these rings, and when the rings touched, they would get supercharged and be able to, like, project explosions for a little while. And then, uh, I, I like the way the costumes are inverted, colors of each other. You know, kid, kid sidekicks were big deals at the time. And uh, I, I, I never liked, I, I, with the exception of Robin, who, who I tolerated, I didn't really like teen sidekicks. Uh, I, I, I was never one of these people that needed to see myself in characters. I, I despise that whole notion I like of, of identity politics. doesn't matter what flavor of identity politics. And I, I, you, I don't need a character to look like me. If I'm a 12-year-old kid, I don't need to see a, 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 a old boy to represent me in the adventures. You know, I don't know. If that, it's, 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 it, I, I could go on and on and on and I'll just lose viewerships and subscribers but let's just say that i was introduced to the dynamite in the young all-stars which was a comic book i i'm probably the only person who liked the comic but 
it was created with the wrong intent. It was created to fix continuity after the crisis on Infinite Earth, rather than like the emphasis was fixing continuity, not not telling great stories. Although you know, Roy Thomas told good stories. I I liked it. I I got it up until the end until it was canceled, but it suffered from a. You know, like it was there to to fill in imaginary gaps in an imaginary universe. You know, it was like to fix a world building. I I I, I have a new view on world building after after talking to Brian Bow of the wonderful creator of uh, the wonderful comic Wolf and Batsy. I'll talk about that in a video all its own. But anyway, really, you know, they say you can never change your mind. Well, I, I had my mind changed in in a very pleasant, positive way. But anyway, back to Dan Dynamite. I, you know. Young All Stars, I liked it. That's, that's all I got to say. I'm, I guess I'm talking too much. Here is a creator, uh, Trevor Von Eden. I recognize that right away. I never liked Trevor Von Eden's artwork. I never met the man. He could be the greatest guy in the world. I, 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 I don't dislike him. I just don't like his art. I don't. I, I just never liked it. The Whale. Who, who, where is he from? Black Lightning Number One. Oh, that's a comic I just don't have. That's Tony Isabella created the Black Lightning. I'm interested in Black Lightning. I should I should pick that up, but I hope Trevor Von Eden doesn't draw it. I just don't like him. Tokamak. There's a Marvel Tokamak and there's a DC Tokamak. I guess Tokamak is something to do with the nuclear uh, radiation. Yes, he's Fury of Firestorm villain. And who drew Dennis Cowan and uh, Greg? Uh, I can't even read that. Greg Brooks. Dennis Cowan did the art on a uh, the 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 the. the Denny O'Neill's Question series for a long, long, long time. So I'm, I'm a fan of his. And I love the Fury of Firestorm. Something about that comic. Those big puffy <laughs> sleeves on, on, on his costume. Just a great costume. So he's a nuclear reactor. Tomahawk and Dan Hunter. So does Dan Hunt... Is Dan Hunter... Is he a guy that hunts people named Dan? Or is he a hunter named Dan? I, the world will never know. But anyway, uh, I'm joking. Uh, Dan Spiegel, another classic creator... Star Spangled Comics 69. I, I don't know much about DC's Western comics, believe it or not. I'm collecting them now for the first time in my life. And uh, I got All-Star Western number one. I didn't read it yet because uh, I'm reading Jonah Hex first. And I really should read All-Star Western comics first now that I realize it. So there you go. It, but, uh, you know, it. it's... I don't know these characters. I don't know what's wrong with me, and I my brain is is, is fumbling. I'm getting I'm getting uh, crazy. Tomahawks Rangers. What, what are their names? Big Anvil. Hester Rudolph. Kane Tuck Jones. Long Rifle. Stovepipe. I like Stovepipe. Wicket. A Wildcat. Frenchie. Dan Hunter. Cannonball. Brass Buttons and Big Anvil. I don't know anything about them. Dan Spiegel's doing the art again. I don't know. Looks fun. Tommy Tomorrow. I don't know. There's something always makes me laugh about long sleeves and shorts. <laughs> Jim Mooney, what a great artist. Jim Mooney, what a great artist. I didn't realize what a great artist he was until I started doing this channel. And I so many comics. Like if if you if at the beginning, I I kind of well, I didn't know what I was doing. Not that I know what I'm doing now, but I extra didn't know what I was doing. And I took out all my big guns and did them right away, thinking that everybody was going to be amazed. Oh, this guy's got X-Men number one. This guy's got Fantastic Four number one. Nobody cared. Those those videos. Guys, it, if, if you're interested, go into my back catalog. Like, I started this channel like two years ago. And I did some really important comics. I shot my wad on huge comics. I did... You know, the first appearance of Thor, first appearance of, of Daredevil, first appearance of the Avengers, and things like that. And uh, a lot of them were drawn by Jim Mooney. You know, a lot of my, a lot of great comics. So I didn't realize, it's like, a lot of Ghost Rider, just, I don't know, Spectacular Spider-Man, just a great artist. But that's all I have to say about Tommy tomorrow, because I don't know anything about him. I, I, I could go off and on about the creator. T.O. Morrow, I always like this concept. It's just a clever name. Joe Brozowski, Greg Brooks, T.O. Morrow, the, the evil scientist. I, there's something about an evil scientist as a, as a villain. It's just a great villain, you know? And, and evil scientists, they work just as well in, in, in uh, horror comics. They work just as well as in uh, superhero comics. And you can even have them in Western comics. Just just a great concept. T.O. Morrow, the top. I wouldn't be caught dead dressed like that. Carmine Infantino and... Uh, Joe Gillia. Uh, 
again, Joe uh, Carmine Infantino seems to live or die by his by his inker. This is pretty good, although that costume, geez. There's a reason why you never see human top <laughs> the, the the top uh, cosplayers. <laughs> Toy Man, the Superman villain, Marshall Rogers, whom I really really like. I don't know. The, the, <laughs> The Toy Man. I, I don't know what much to say about him. Uh, the few appearances I have wasn't particularly impressed, but uh, I think it has the potential to be a terrifying villain. Like the Toy Man could could be a really scary, scary super horror villain. Uh, really, yeah, but uh, I don't know. As a Superman villain, Superman has lame villains. Matt Savage, the Trail Boss. Again, I can repeat myself. This is Carmine Infantino and Bernard Sachs. This is this is pretty good. Don't know anything about him. What comic is he in? Western Comics seventy seven. Don't know anything about him because uh, I don't know anything about West DC Western. Paris Collins and Gary Martin. I love Paris Collins artwork. The Trickster. I I love Trickster villains. I I don't like Trickster good guys. I think the concept, the archetype of a Trickster works better as a villain than, than as as a, as a good guy. But uh, you know what? I, I kind of like a maybe like a like a a bad guy who's not totally bad i don't know like not an anti-hero an anti-hero is kind of like violent like the punisher so i don't i don't know what i'm talking about but uh i do like the concept of of, of the trickster villain you know like uh but but not committed to, to evil and i think that that's kind of fits the bill of the trickster there's something like something playful about a trickster flash villain for those who don't know what i'm talking about the trigger twins I don't know what to say about the trigger trigger, other than it's Carmine Infantino and Dick Giordano. Look at Carmine Infantino got a lot of work on this page. Drinking coffee. Uh, when did they appear? All Star Western Fifty Eight. So I'll see their first appearance because that's a comic I'm collecting from number one. Can't say anything about them. Can't say anything about them. There we go. Trigon the Terrible. George Perez. This is the devil in 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 uh, in uh, Teen Titans comics. For those of you, I, I don't know. I've never watched any iteration of the Teen Titans cartoons. I heard some of them are really good. I heard some of them are goofy. I wouldn't know, but I will tell you that the '80s Marv Wolfman, George Perez Teen Titans are some of the best comic books in the world. And if you call yourself a comic books fan, you should really do yourself a favor. You know, I very rarely give you a command, <laughs> but I'm giving you a command. Go get the Teen Titans by by. Uh, George Perez, Mark Wolf, they're, 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 a lot of them are collected. They they are, uh, and, and there's people now who say that they're dated. You know, they're not, they're not dated. They're not, I don't know. Maybe maybe because I, I got them as they came out, but whatever. But Trigon is Raven's father. The, he's basically the devil. So he's like a the ruler of of a hell like dimension. So if you don't want to, you know, actually use Satan in a comic, you use the ruler of a hell like dimension. Just just wonderful. Like to the point, like when he showed up. You're like, oh God, this is gonna be, this is gonna be tough. How are they gonna beat this one? So this is Rick Holborg giving us tsunami, and I don't know. I always thought that she was. This was just like a sexy design. So she was American Japanese, and in the comics, All Star Squadron Thirty Three. I have her first appearance in the comics. She was put into a, a, an American internment camp. You know, we remember one of our dark periods in American history is we took innocent Japanese. And put him in concentration camps at the beginning of World War II. George Takai of Star Trek fame. He was a little kid who was who was in a, in a, in a concentration camp. And, uh, I mean, yeah, we didn't do like the Nazis, but we did put them in concentration camps. You know, the whole world was, was experimenting with concentration camps at this point. You know, America, no exception. But I digress. So that's her story. She grew up in these camps. And then when they found out that she had powers, they wanted to free. And she was like, no, you put me in a camp, I'll stay in a camp. Like she was making a point. You know, but they recruited her for the young all stars. She became like the the love interest for uh, Neptune Perkins. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 they they used to be uh, uh, in in Wizard magazine. They they would have the Mort of the month, and it was just like the lame character of the month. I nominate Neptune Perkins for the <laughs> best best uh, best in show or lifetime achievement award in, of the Mort of the month. Okay, who is this? Peter Lard? Is that a Teenage Mutant Ninja. Oh, it's Turtle Man. Well played. Well played. Okay, there you go. You got me. You got me, you sly devil. So there you go. Turtle Man. Would he fight the Flash? I, I, yep, he fights the Flash. I don't know anything about this character. I know nothing about the, this character other than well played. The creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles drawing this. Pretty pretty cool. Tweedledee and Tweedledum by Bill Sienkiewicz. Batman villain. Batman I, are they still around? 
you know, the Mad Hatter still shows up in, in Batman, so I imagine Tweedledee and Tweedledum should still show around. You know, well, I, I, I love Alice in Wonderland. I love Look Through the Looking Glass, but they're just goofy villains. There you go. There's a good villain. Two-Face by Brian Bollard. What a great artist. I, I love this concept of, of, of duality ex as explored by him. And I like what Chuck Dixon said. His gimmick is the coin, but he's not going to let the coin ruin his plans. Like, he will, he will fake it. You know, he he will fudge the results. I don't know what 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 is better, a person who you know who claims to 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 do to uh, live by this duality of the coin, or a person who claims to live by the duality and then and then cheats. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of like both concepts, but that is pretty cool. One one of Batman's more long lived, uh, stronger characters, the two thousand committee. I know nothing about the who who drew this, who drew this, Joe Brzezowski and Art. Nichols. I know nothing about them. Nothing. It looks like they, you know, it's, people are going to get mad at me because I, I talk about how good uh, Firestorm was and then these are Firestorm villains and you can watch all the videos. I don't remember the Firestorm villains. Typhoon. Great name. Joe Brzezowski and Steve Mitchell. Who did he fight? You watch. It's going to be another Firestorm villain. The Flash. Okay, so there you go. I don't know much about the Flash before the Crisis on Infinite Earths. You know, even though the Flash was one, one of the comics that I did get you know, on and off. I just like the, the costume. And that, when you were a little kid, you just liked the costume. Here, you talk about a cool costume. This is Tear, Dennis Cowan, and Dick Giordano. This is uh, one of the new gods. This is like Tear redesigned by the Superpowers toy. So he, he was one of the, like, Darkseid's uh, henchmen. And he, no, 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 he fought the Legion of Superheroes. What am I talking about? And he has this super bionic arm. I, I just remember the toy. Oh my God, I love that toy. This was another one. Second, second place board, board of the month. I just never liked this character. Dorm Bray Fogel. He was Tyrock, and he had, like, sonic abilities, and he joined the Legion of Superheroes. And I forget, did, did he die? Did he die? Did he leave the group? I, I don't remember. And I, I just never liked it. You know why? I'll tell you why. Lame costume. Lame costume goes a long way. Just like a good costume goes a long way, a lame costume goes a long way. And uh, if you got a lame costume, I'm sorry, but... Uh, I'm not rooting for you. <laughs> Speaking of lean costume, Ultra. I don't even know anything about this. Eric Larson, that crazy maniac, and Mike McLaughlin, Mike Macklin, who I really like. Justice League of America 153. I don't know anything about him. I, I don't know anything about him. I think I even have this comic. I just didn't read it yet because I'm reading them in order. There we go. Ultra Boy. Ron Friends and Bruce Patterson. Two amazing talents. There's his girlfriend, uh, Phantom Girl. And I like how this clicks within the Legion of Superheroes. The, the, you know, Mon el and, and, and Ultra Boy and, and Phantom Girl and Shadow Lass are like a clique that, that's always hanging out together. Just, I don't know. There's like 30 members of, of, of the team, and they can't all get along. So I, I kind of like that. It's kind of realistic to have a, to have cliques. It, 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 and like maybe a legion, you know, a squad, a squadron, whatever you want to call it, a platoon of heroes. So his power is... And let me know, do you guys think this is lame or not? Because I never thought it was lame, but somebody just told me that, that it, it, it's lame. He has all the superpowers, all the classic superpowers. Flight, x-ray vision, heat vision, uh, uh, super speed, invulnerability, you know, super, super brains, but only one at a time. So he can only have one of the powers of Superman at a time. So if he's using his super strength, he's not using his super speed. If he's using his invulnerability, he can't fly. You know, so there you go. Uh, is that lame? I think, I think it's, it makes it, you have to be clever. You have to be clever. And here is one of my favorite villains. This is by, who, who drew on this? I, I can't read that. John Stradnerna and Jerry Ordway. I love Jerry Ordway. Stet, Stetney, I, I don't, I never heard that name before. So forgive me for, if I mispronounced it. The Ultra Humanite. I'm not even joking when I say I find this villain terrifying. Just, one of the things that gets me is like people who mess with free will and people who, who mess with like your body, your identity. Okay. So those, those are scary to me. And that's, he does both. So he started out as a scientist, uh, real name unknown. And, uh, he developed a way to swap bodies with people and he would call his targets humanites. Like he didn't even grant them the, uh, the title of being human, like he dehumanized them by calling them humanites. You're not human. You're a humanite. You're 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 you're, you're a thrall to me. And when his body got destroyed, he put himself into a beautiful actress. So he he you know he, he was a male brain in, in a beautiful actress body. And then she had this gem where she did powers. Then he transformed himself into a gigantic insect, and then he 
all the while he was growing this perfect body to accept his ho and since he was now a humanite because by his own definitions he was a humanite humanites were the people who were subject to, to his to his power he's now the ultra humanite so this is the perfect body to to, to take his perfect mind and he's, he's got vast mental powers vast super strength just and you know he's he reserves the right to steal another body but he's been staying in this creepy ape genetically modified ape body just a terrifying build the Ultraman, Gary Concord, the Ultraman. This is by Marshall Rogers, another classic, classic. I don't know anything about him. All American Comics number eight. I can't talk about him. Don't know anything about him. It, it doesn't even look like DC, you know? I don't, I don't know. Ultra, the multi-alien. A lot of Ultras over here. Who is this? This is Terry Beatty and Dennis Jensen. I don't know much about Dennis Jensen, but Terry Beatty I like. Terry Beatty, uh... If I remember correctly, he he did a he did a, uh, uh, Miss Vic, uh, Miss Miss Tree Miss Tree a series I showcased, that was like one of my first videos that like had like a hundred views. I was like, wow, that that's that's really cool. I, I like. But anyway, let's let's talk about this. I don't know anything about this. This looks like a metamorpho kind of guy. Don't know anything about him. Who did he fight? Mystery in space. So there you go. Don't know anything about him. Don't even know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. Uncle Sam. These started what what quality comics or police comics I forget and then they were bought by DC and so so it it, it originated in another company. DC did a lot of that buying a lot of uh, catalogs of of other comic companies for good or for bad and then they became like their own world before the crisis on Infinite Earths when everything got a uh, got uh, wrapped into one. So he's like the spirit of a uh, like the he's like the the zeitgeist of America like like countries like form like a psychic embodiment of, of 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 all the beings i, I kind of find that idea fascinating the unimaginable that is a great name by eric larson and paul near two great talents although eric larson's a crazy person justice league villain i can't wait to learn about this you know i, I think i'm up to 12 in the justice league by reading so I'll, I'll find out about this and i'll let you know but i i just love that concept he's unimaginable and he's just an energy construct universal I hate Universal. I've always hated Universal. Uh, Greg LaRoque and Arn St Star. I don't know much. But Adventure Comics 349. I, I hate Universal. I hate, for the most part, any superhero villain or superhero who's who was like, oh, so, you know, I'm light, oh, I'm, I'm smart, oh. I, I hate that. That's just lazy. So I, I could never like Universal. Even though they kind of made him an interesting villain, I just, I just, I just don't like him. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Oh, who did this cover art? Because oh, Eduardo Barato. Okay, great talent, great talent, Eduardo Barato. He did a lot of a lot of westerns. Just a. I I think I prefer him on non superhero comics. He did some like detective and and war comics and, and westerns, but as, along with a bunch of superhero comics, just a great talent. So there you go. This was today's video. Um, I love doing this series. I, I get a lot of feedback from this one. People email me or message me on Twitter saying they really like when I do this. But I kind of, I like to space them out because I'm once I do it, it's done. You know what I mean? So, you know, <laughs> I, I, I wish the series went on for 100 more issues because I'm really getting a kick out of it. And, and uh, subscribers seem to like it. But uh, maybe I'll go after this and, and I'll do the second version of the Marvel Universe. Okay, so I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Thank you, guys. Bye bye.